Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and I have some of my friends jokingly say that I always have an existential crisis going on in my life. And I think I've been wondering a little about this because yes, I can understand that sometimes I give my friends that perception because I, for me it's like every time, like every day, there is something about the world or something that I'm processing, something I'm reflecting on. I'm reflecting on why I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm reflecting on if I'm doing the right thing, I'm reflecting on if I'm a good person or not, I'm reflecting on how I can make sure that I do something to help humanity, I'm thinking about if I'm helping humanity, I'm thinking about if I'm good or bad, I'm just going through constant reflections about existence and why I'm living here, and what my point is and what my purpose is, and I feel like I despite all of this, have a fairly good grasp of all of it. I think that sometimes people can be led to have the assumption about me that I don't know what I'm doing or that I'm just uh, going through a crisis non-stop. And sometimes I'm sure you can look at other people, you can say, oh, they seem to have it all so figured out and they seem to have it so... they seem so sane, so stable, so sure of themselves and of everything they do. But I'm thinking that maybe it's a part of the I N consciousness to have this constant ongoing existential crisis guiding your thought process. Maybe that existential crisis is where an I N X X type thrives. Maybe it makes sense that INTPs, INFPs, INTJs, and INFJs mutually keep asking themselves what the point is. Where, why they're doing what they're doing, what, what they're doing it for, if it's good, if it's going to make them happy, what it means to be happy. Um, I think that that kind of uncertainty isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I have noticed that INTJs, INFPs, and INTPs seem to be going through the same thing. I've seen it in the characters, in movies, in books, in literature, and in my friendship circles. I'm not the only one who goes through this process every day. I'm not the only person who thinks this way or reflects on these things. And the fact that I'm reflecting on these things, these things does not mean that my existential crisis is more, is more profound than it is for any other type. I think that many people can be living an existential crisis without realizing it. Many people might be doing things without realizing why they are doing it. Many people might be doing so many things without understanding why or what the point is of what they are doing. And that search for the point, I think it's so necessary. I think it's so important. I think it's uh, a key to being human. Uh, we are all pursuing being human. We are all in search of that answer to why we are here and why we live and what our role and purpose on this planet is. And uh, this question is not something negative. It doesn't necessarily lead to something bad. It doesn't necessarily lead to nihilism or that resigned, oh, there's no point with anything. It can be that there is a point in life that we have to invent on our own, or maybe there's a point that is core to being human, uh, that we have been born with, a genetic uh, desire or a sense of purpose. Maybe there is something in the world that gives us purpose. Maybe there is something inside of us, if we think about it long enough, that will give us purpose and motivation. I find that there are probably many ways to finding purpose and there are many ways to experiencing purpose and just as I can experience existential crisis I can experience pur pur purpose and I don't I think most of my friends would describe me as a very purposeful person uh, I've lived my entire life seeking out and living with a high sense of purpose and meaning in everything I've done and I haven't done anything if I haven't seen the meaning with it. I haven't uh, put myself in any situation that I saw as pointless. Uh, maybe I have actually, but with great reluctance and with great annoyance. I need somehow to feel that there is some form of philosophical deeper meaning with everything I do. And otherwise I won't do it. And I often need to reason my way to find out this meaning. 
I need to find out what it is I'm searching for before I throw myself out on an adventure. I need to know what I'm doing before I go do it. <laughs> Um, and that's often my sense of passion, that's my sense of purpose, that's my sense of my path in life. Uh, I think that every one of us has a path in life to walk. It's not just about following your passion, but it's about how you get there to your passion and how you explore it. Uh, we can think, we stare ourselves blindly at what our passion is, but then there are so many other questions related to that passion, like uh, where do I want my passion to take me and how do I want to get there? The journey is just as important as the destination in itself. Uh, to feel that you are walking this journey in a way, way that is true to the size of your shoes or to uh, what you are comfortable with, what you enjoy, what you think is right and wrong. That's just equally important. Uh, you need to engage with your journey towards your purpose uh, You need to understand that you're taking the right steps that you are following your inner compass People say go with your gut and the gut and the reason might not be because the gut is always right But the reason might be that the gut tells us what way we want to walk Because we can lose ourselves in that whole what's convenient what do other people think is right? What do I, what steps do people normally walk? But it's not about that. I don't think that is the key for at least an NJ type or uh, an intuitive. I don't think that the key is to walk the same path everyone else did. Even if that pays more objectively and gives more rewards, it's also about how do you want to walk to get there? Do you want to enjoy the, the journey there? Because often if you put yourself in walking the same path that everyone else wants towards your passion, no matter how original your passion is, you have to realize that uh, the journey also decides the destination and how you choose to get there decides how you, what kind of destination you reach. Uh, with every step you take, the destination you're moving towards is constantly changing and unfolding. And that's like, that may, that's just logical math there. It's that um, you can walk the path that uh, people have given to you and uh, you can use the means that other people have given to you and you can uh, reach that destination but I think a lot of people do that and then they feel like they wasted the way there and they think that on the way there they just uh, they didn't get what they under, what they thought they wanted to get. They didn't get the satisfaction from what they got that they thought they would get from it. And I think that happens the most when you end up walking in a way that isn't true to your gut. In, uh, you second guess your gut, you get the, to the destination and you get all the rewards of not following your gut, but you don't get the satisfaction, the inner sense of purpose and fulfillment that you get from uh, walking your own path. So you have to take that in cons into cons consideration. How much is your gut worth to you? How much do you care about your gut? And how much do you care about getting to your destination in a way that is true to you? That's also a question of ethics, really, because I find that in politics and in life and in how I choose to live, there's also always been these constant options to cheat. Options to... Um, to commit like moral wrongs, to uh, cheat my way to success, and I think I think about those times when I got those options, and I think about what would have happened if I would have followed that, and I realized that if I got there by cheating, I wouldn't have felt like I deserved it in the end, and if I got there through cheating, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, I wouldn't have any fun at all. It's like uh, it's like when I played video games and I put in the sheet codes in Age of Empires and I got all the money and resources and I could produce soldiers uh, instantly and I realized that it was so boring. It was so, so boring. Uh, there was no point at all. And I have challenge here. I mean, the, the lesson here is not that the, it's the challenges that make it fun. The lesson here is that it's your journey and how you want to get there that is fun. If you love to go to a destination uh, through boat and you find that planes are cheaper, well, sometimes you should pick boats because that just means that you're gonna have a lot more fun getting there than you would if you had just gone with the plane. It's not just always, and I think that people get lost in those. Uh, and that's of course me speaking as an NF, I think people get lost in the 
tangible rewards. Okay, I think it's not just true to NFs. I think it's true to everyone. Uh, that it's people stare themselves, themselves blindly at the profit, the money, but they don't stare at why. And they don't stare at what that money means and what that uh, what those numbers mean. They don't think about um, how fun it will be or how fulfilling it will be or how meaningful it will feel or how good it will feel. And that's where people get so lost. And I think people really start feeling lost when you get into that. You can get so lost in the numbers. But think about it. What is the point? And don't be scared of that question. Because that is not a scary question. That is a deeply fulfilling question. It always will take you closer to a sense of fulfillment with what you do. That's at least what I believe.